In recent years, we've seen record-breaking house price rises in both the UK and the US. House prices have risen faster than inflation and also importantly faster than earnings. And this has led house price earnings ratio to reach record levels, the unsustainable levels which last saw a house price crash back in 2007-2008. Now I've been teaching economics for over 20 years and I've often heard people warn about house price crashes which haven't materialized. However, this time I feel is different because house price to earning ratios are at record levels, but importantly, the factors that have been sustaining the housing market in recent years are changing. The ultra low interest rates are coming to an end as central banks grapple with unexpectedly high inflation and they start to return interest rates closer to normal levels. In this video, we'll look at why house prices rose so rapidly in the past and why this is going to change in the next few months and years as house prices are very likely to fall quite considerably. I do remember teaching economics back in the early 2000s and in those early days I used to often look at house price crash forums and there were many predictions of falling house prices that never really materialised apart from the brief crash of 2008-09 and the reason is that there's a fundamental shortage of supply in the UK. But another factor pushing up prices in the past 13 years has been the artificially low interest rates. In the UK and other countries, interest rates have been close to zero as central banks have attempted to stimulate economic growth in the wake of a financial crisis. These interest rates of 0% have been very effective in increasing demand for housing. 0% interest rates make it very cheap to buy a mortgage and it gives it much better return than saving money in a bank or buying a government or corporate bond. So these low interest rates have really increased the demand from buy to let investors who are able to buy a house in order to get rentable income, much better yield from saving money in the bank, but also benefiting from equity growth, which was seen in the housing market. And so this is one major factor why house prices have increased so much. And the housing market in both the UK and US is increasingly dominated by buy to let investors. The percentage of first time buyers uh, getting a mortgage is actually going down. However, this has all changed in 2022 because inflation has increased far beyond the expectations of central banks. They were hoping that the temp inflation would prove temporary and transitory, but it's proved a lot more sustainable than they hoped. And the result of this is that rather belatedly, central banks are starting to increase interest rates. And the Bank of England just this week raised rates by a record level and hinted that they will do whatever it takes to bring inflation under control, even if this means a recession. So this is quite a change in policy because previously they'd kind of hoped the inflation would go away and they didn't want to cause a slowdown in growth. But now they're hinting that actually low inflation is their number one priority and they're willing to risk a recession and I should add a fall in house prices to make it happen. Inflation is forecast to reach 13% in the UK because of rising energy prices, rising food prices and imp increased inflationary expectations. And some economists warn that actually this is slightly optimistic because the bank didn't include the possibility of Russia cutting off gas supplies to Europe and that would cause a catastrophic rise in uh, gas and electricity prices this winter which would cause even more inflation and perhaps more need for higher interest rates. So the demand for housing is likely to fall for a few reasons. Firstly, higher interest rates makes mortgages more expensive. Some households, hard pressed by rising prices and falling real wages, may be forced to sell. Perhaps more importantly, the higher interest rates make it much less attractive for buy-to-let investors. Thirdly, we're likely to see a change in market sentiment. The past few years have been dominated by optimism about rising house prices. But with the change conditions and high rates, market sentiment is likely to turn to negative. And compared to 2006, it's much easier for people to know what's happening to house prices. And the first signs of falling house prices may encourage buy to let investors to sell as quickly as possible to uh, prevent any further capital losses. Also, it's worth bearing in mind the housing market is also closely linked to the state of the economy. If you look at the UK housing market, the big falls in house prices in 1980, 1990 
and 2007 were all during a recession because in a recession, unemployment rises, incomes go down, and so people can't afford to buy a house. So if we do get a recession this winter, which is very likely, and it could be one of the deepest on record, this will be another factor reducing demand for housing, likely to push uh, house prices even lower. And as a bank laid out this week, there's a real cost of living crisis. Inflation is rising, wages are not keeping up. In fact, real wages fell by uh, 2%, the biggest fall for almost two decades. So household incomes have been really squeezed. It's not quite as bad in America. Inflation is lower. The dollar is stronger, helping to keep oil and gas prices lower. And also America has its own supply of natural gas, so it's less su suspect susceptible to uh, Russian uh, cutting off the supply. However, the housing market in the US did uh, really boom in the past few years, partly due to the COVID effect, which is people wanting to buy a better house when they're working from home. And this is starting to subside. The number of people buying a house has gone down. So how much will house prices fall? Well, easily they could fall by 10 or 15%, possibly more. I think in the UK, it's worth bearing in mind that one aspect of the housing market isn't going to go away. And that is the shortage of supply compared to the numbers of households. And this will prevent a limit to the amount that house prices fall because it's still going to be expensive to rent. There's still going to be a shortage of housing. And although interest rates go up and it's less attractive for buy to let investors, this fundamental imbalance will still be there. So for example, in 2007, the credit crisis, house prices in Spain fell by 50% because there was a fall in demand, but also a surplus of supply. In the UK, they only fell 20% because there was a fall in demand, but still that shortage of supply. Nevertheless, there are many uh, factors really working against the housing market and we're likely to see quite a significant fall, especially a fall in real terms. Because one um, evaluation, you could say, is that high inflation does actually make it worthwhile to put your money in an asset like a house because it can hold its value better than cash. But we are likely to see a fall in real prices, real house prices, because if inflation is 13%, and house prices stay zero, that's still a 13% fall in real terms. Also, the house price to income ratios can be exceeded in the short term when credit is cheap, but they do still provide a guide to the very long term. Because if you look at the recent history, there are times when house price to income ratios reach these record levels of close to six, seven times income but they tend to be not sustainable. And when there's a shock, in this case, recession and higher interest rates, that's when the market turns and the bubble turns into a bust and the fall in prices really negatively affects consumer confidence, causing prices to fall further. And as house prices fall, this encourages people to get out of the housing market. So overall, it's not looking good for the housing market. The recession is going to be quite deep in the UK, maybe less so in the US, but even so, it's enough to reduce demand. But the more concerning thing is the very high levels of inflation and how much will interest rates have to increase by to get inflation back under control. One caveat is that we do hope that the inflation is actually uh, related to cost push factors and that these will be temporary. So maybe in 2023, we may get quite a sharp fall in inflation, take people by surprise. In the US, there's already signs that inflation may be falling, at least in the short term. And if inflation does fall back down, this will enable to the bank and central banks to cut interest rates and uh, re-help the housing market. But that's still a long way off before central banks get back into the mode of thinking about cutting rates. At the moment, especially in the UK and Europe, they're wanting to get inflation under control and bring it down from 10, 12% closer to their target of 2%. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you like it, do feel free to subscribe. I'll be making more videos about uh, recent events in macroeconomics. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask and it may inspire a video. But I hope to see you again soon. 
and um, stay safe. Thank you. Bye.